motor control circuit. To design a motor control circuit, we need to have a diagram. So we need to have a power diagram. A power diagram consists in contactors and MCBs and the motors and all the components that controls the power side of the motor. Just like the one that I'm showing you here. It also control, contains the control side of the diagram. The control side of the diagram are the push buttons and the inputs and the out position like the, the lights that will indicate the state of the process. And through the application of contactors, this is an example of what a contactor is. So these are three contactors here. Each of these contactors is an electrical switching device controlled by electromagnetic. So the main component of the contactor are the coils. The coils are somewhere in here. The normally open contacts of the auxiliary, here in front we have the auxiliary contacts. We have 13 and 14 normally open contact and 21 and 22 normally closed auxiliary contact. It also has the amateur. The amateur is, is somewhere in here, goes in and out. So, the coil can be, the coil can be AC, it can be DC coil, and, uh, and the voltage ranges from 12 volts to 400 volts. Once voltage is applied to the coil, the coil is energized, and a powerful magnet will pull the emitter in. It will engage the emitter and the normally closed contact will become open and the normally open contact will become closed. These are the mains. L1, L2, L3. We have T1, T2, T3. These are the mains. So the mains contact, which is normally open, will change over and become closed. And it will begin to supply electrical power to the motor or other connected loads. These auxiliary contacts can also be used, they can be used to wire the control of the motor. Other control devices that we have here are the inverter. This is a frequency variator. The job of this Variate, this frequency variator is to control this electrical motor right here. The inverter is called a frequency variator because it contains a rectifier which converts the AC voltage. In this case, this is a three phases AC voltage which is supplied through the mains. The AC voltage, 400 volts, is supplied through the mains here, 400 volts between two poles. And then it supplies the motor through the terminals. This is, these are the power terminals through which it supplies the motor. And then we have another terminal here which are the control terminals. We have analog inputs and digital inputs here. And these are the analog inputs and the analog output. 
these inverters they contain a rectifier which converts the 400 volts that's going in to DC voltage and converts the DC voltage to an AC inverter, allowing us to apply new variable voltage output. The inverter unit has keypad, has keypad, which can be used to access the parameters. Some of the characteristics that can be configured in an electric motor via an inverter are a preset speed, acceleration ramps, overload trips, braking, and etc. We can control this electrical motor through the keypad, through this keypad, and we can also do it through these push buttons. And we can do this through a stop and start push button as well. We can also use uh, the programmable logic control, which we have to program the card and connect the card to the uh, inputs and outputs of, us, of this variable frequency drive. To vary the speed of the motor remotely, we can install a potentiometer to the analog input of the inverter. Between, we have to connect it between the 10, uh, 10 volts and the COM. And then we have to put the wiper on the A1 analog input to one. To control the, this inverter through the push buttons, we have to use the digital input one, two, and three. To be able to choose the right inverter for an electrical motor, we have to study the rating plate of the inverter. Yeah, it says it's 7.5 kilowatts. And we have to study the rating plate of the motor that we want to connect. Seven point five kilowatts as well. Basically, the main parameters of, to be able to match um, this inverter has to be programmed. These parameters of the inverter has to be programmed, and the main parameters of the inverter are the base frequency. So the base frequency has to match with the running frequency of the motor, of the electrical motor. And we have to set the base voltage, which should be the voltage on the name on the, on the rating plate of the motor. We have the, this also contains a high frequency limiter and a low frequency limiter, which are restrictions 
that pre prevents the inverter from uh, uh, overworking the motor. It also has a, an electronic thermal overload to protect the electrical motor. So the keypad, it has a keypad and then it has the terminals which are the IOs, the input and I output terminals. There's a digital input and digital output. They call them IOs. The digital input and the digital output are the IOs. And then we have the digital input and the, the analog input and output. We have the terminals, the power terminals, and we have the mains terminals.